couple of drills uh, that we do, you know, daily in practice, some of the things that our coaches like uh, to help our kids. And I feel like we have the best coaching staff around. And I'm going to let those guys are going to be coming up and talking to you each individually. Um, and it, it, it's kind of a time crunch. So uh, when we put the stuff up there, you're going to have our information. So if you have uh, extra questions or anything that we may not answer, uh, if you want to, you know, we'll share film with you. Just please reach out and contact us, and we'll be here to help you in any way we can. Uh, right now, I'm going to turn the camera around and – uh, give it to Coach Myers, who's going to start going over the offensive uh, practice schedule and start doing some of those drills and stuff like that. So, Coach Myers. Hi, how's it going? Uh, like Coach Allison said, I'm Coach Myers. Uh, I coach the quarterbacks, and uh, I'm going to be what our typical practice schedule looks like on a, on a day-to-day basis during a normal game week. Um, Mondays we start off, uh, we do a little position stretch, team stretch every day, and then we go into our game plan. So on Sundays, we come up here, we watch film, and we kind of figure out how we're going to defeat the other team and, and the different things we're going to try to exploit and uh, come up with game plan-specific stuff. And that's what we put in for the first 20 or so minutes at, on Monday's practice. Um, just make sure we catch everybody up to speed on the things we're going to be doing uh, this particular week. Um, from there, we move into some individual drills, walk through, and, and we do a lot of uh, – it's more really more one of our lighter days of practice. We're normally just shoulder pads and shorts. Uh, we're not doing a whole lot of heavy hitting, just a lot of learning on Monday. Um, Tuesdays is our, our big uh, our, our big day where we're full pads. Um, we get a little more banging in on Tuesdays. Um, we'll still go through position and team stretch. We'll do some special teams. Um, you know, we normally have a little bit longer of individual because we like to fix the things that we messed up on Monday or, or maybe reiterate some of the stuff that we had to learn on Monday. Uh, and then from there, we do a little walkthrough, and then we get into our, our bulk of the – the team stuff where we're actually going against the defense and, uh, you know, tackling and all that stuff. So um, Tuesdays, uh, we got a long time for that where we just do a whole bunch of game plans and stuff. Silly projectors. Um, and then, uh, so that's our Tuesday. Uh, we finish with two-minute offense just to kind of, um, you know, finish things off a little bit lighter. And then on Wednesdays, uh, it's another uh, – we start practice off a little bit uh, tougher – we do our goal line period against the defense right there. Uh, just get down, put the ball in the three-yard line, and just try to score um, every play. Uh, so we start with that, and then we do our two-minute drill on air um, where we're just trying to, to move the ball down the field as fast as possible, work on getting out of bounds, spiking the ball when we need to, uh, that kind of stuff. And then uh, we'll do some blitz pickup that day, and then we'll go into our team. Uh, but we do kind of have a quick whistle, and, and we kind of lighten things up a little bit on Wednesday. Um, so then when we get to Thursday, uh, we have a little bit shorter practice. Uh, we're normally just in, in uh, helmet and, and our uh, dry, uh, dry goods, our soft goods, where uh, we come out and we basically go through a, a typical game scenario. We come out and we'll uh, do the run through, practice national anthem, how we're going to stand and all that stuff, and then we'll go with special teams, a couple plays of offense, we'll punt, and, and just kind of go through a, a simulated game. And then uh, Friday leading up to the game, uh, we've got our schedule on here, just kind of we, we meet with our kids at the school and then we get to the stadium and we meet, we stretch, and uh, just what a typical pre-game um, schedule looks like. Um, so, like I said, all of our uh, information is on the PowerPoint, and I believe that's been shared with you on the chat. So if you have any questions about anything any of us are going to talk about today, just feel free to email us. Um, now, uh, like I said, also, I, I coach the quarterback, so uh, – a couple of things I want to talk about, just the three things that we try to do in every practice um, as far as the quarterbacks go. At the beginning of practice, when we have our position time, uh, normally we'll get with the centers and we'll work on catching snaps. Uh, you know, so uh, as many snaps as we can catch, uh, the better it's going to be. Uh, and, you know, sometimes we have a low snap or a high snap or off to the side. And, and just as many exchanges as we can get between the center and the quarterback, the better. So we try to do that at the beginning of most practices. Um, the second thing I like to do uh, is a little bit of footwork with the quarterbacks every day. Um, so what we'll do um, a lot of times is we'll just work our three-step drops where we'll, uh, we'll work our three-step drops. We'll get on the sideline, and we'll work to the hashes. So we'll just work on taking our drop all the way back to the hash, and then once they get to the hash, they'll come back, they'll walk around, and they'll do the same thing on the other hash. We'll just work on, on dropping straight back, making sure we're dropping in a straight line, 
making sure we're not dropping at an angle because sometimes those kids want to drop to the left or to the right. Um, so this just helped us to, to work on straight back dropping. Um, that's one of the things we'll do every day. We'll also sometimes get um, the bags out. We'll do some footwork through the bags. And uh, there's several other drills. Again, if you need any, just uh, feel free to email. Um, and then lastly, the last thing we do uh, before we get into our small group or our team activities is we'll warm up. Um, you know, obviously, uh, the quarterbacks, we're going to be throwing the ball a lot, so we want to make sure our arms are good and ready to go when it's time. Uh, pretty much every single day, we, we, this is the last thing we do before we get into that. Uh, we just line up about 10 yards apart, um, and then we go through a progression. We start with our heels on the line, um, and we're throwing 10 yards. And then we go left foot forward, going 10 yards. Right foot forward, throwing 10 yards. And what we're trying to emphasize when we do that is just making sure that we have a good body position, making sure that our shoulders – um, uh, point at our target when, we, when we're done. We follow through uh, with our hips and our shoulders and getting everything pointed at the right direction. Um, so after we are uh, done just throwing from a standing position, uh, we'll do something called a weave drill. Um, with the weave drill, uh, whoever has the ball is going to start running forward, um, and, and this guy's going to backpedal. All right, so they're going to move in the same direction, and the guy that's got the ball is going to hold it right here for a few steps, bring it up here for a few steps, and then uh, just practice throwing on the run. Um, so that's why we do that drill. Um, after that, what we'll do is we'll, we'll uh, stagger. We'll put two of our quarterbacks off to the side, and what they'll do uh, is they'll practice our, our quick game, our, what we call our 90 game. We'll practice that, where they'll spin the ball, simulate like they're catching a snap, and catch it and throw it, and just try to get it out of their hands as fast as possible, still throwing to their same partner, um, just kind of at an angle, which is one of the more uh, – common plays that we run or we just catch. Um, after we do that in both directions, uh, we'll then work our, our rollout game or our sprint out game. Uh, they'll kind of line up the same way. Uh, we'll just teach our quarterbacks how to get depth, get width, they're rolling out, and, and throw into their partner on the sprint out. Um, we'll do that, again, both ways, emphasizing getting your hips in the right position, footwork, and uh, just making sure you're, you're – taking a good throw and not just throwing off your back foot and watching it. So um, that's pretty much uh, every day what we do with the quarterbacks. Um, and then we get into our small group stuff. Uh, you'll, you'll see you meet Coach Cole and Coach Trahan later. A lot of the drills they're going to talk about, the quarterbacks are also involved with um, after we do our individual. But uh, up next, uh, Coach Grant's going to talk about the offensive line. Okay. Well, one of the things that, well, like I said, my name is Coach Grant. One of the things that I think we do a good job of is – finding a way to find something that we're good at. Uh, you know, there's a number of different concepts and schemes out there, uh, and there's a number of programs that might have a different philosophy, might have, uh, you know, 10 different run schemes that they, that they teach. Uh, we try to keep it simple. We, we, we firmly believe that we want the guys up front to feel confident in what they're doing and, and how to do it. And so we keep our uh, number of schemes, you know, pretty simple. Uh, you know, the things that we do around those schemes – uh, can vary where we can run inside zone is one of our major schemes and we can run this out of one back we can run this out of two back we can run it with a tight end without a tight end uh, we do some rpos off of it we can use quarterback reads off of it and so we we dress it up and have a lot of eye candy with motions and different things that we can possibly do but up front we want to try to keep it simple uh you know i, I think that's important in, in order to be effective you know oftentimes Coach, you'll watch some things. And you'll watch Alabama Saturday and be like, man, they're really good. This is really – well, that's great. You may be able to draw it up, but if your kids can't effectively perform it, uh, it doesn't do you or your program any good. So uh, one of the things that we like to do uh, every day with the offensive line I think is important is focus on uh, taking effective steps. I always tell our offensive line athletes that the guys that they're blocking are going to be a better athlete than you. Uh, so if I'm having to go block an inside linebacker, I've got to be as effective as I possibly can in getting there. And so one of the things that we'll focus on on a daily basis is just taking good steps. And we'll focus on the different steps that we'll take. And this is a drill that's pretty easy that you can just do with your whole groups. You can have your first groups up there, your second groups up there, and they can all go at the same time. And we can just say, okay, we're going to start off, and oftentimes we'll start off in a two-point stand. We'll just say, I just want to work on our footwork. Uh, and saying, okay, we're just going to take our own right step, and we're just going to work on that first initial step and just making sure that we're being effective, that we're understanding, but, you know, we kind of go with the drive-catch uh, philosophy where we're understanding where the power and the force has got to come from. If I'm trying to go to the right, 
that I'm not focusing on trying to step to the right, but I'm focusing on driving off that back step and taking a good uh, zone step where I'm gaining ground. Uh, so once we do that to the right, we'll maybe progress and then we'll go to the left. Uh, we'll do some of the, you know, pulls that we'll do. Uh, we also do some yak steam stuff. And so we'll work through the different pulls and, and steps and making sure that we're as effective as possible. But we don't have any wasted motion. Even with some of our best guys, we were watching some film just the other day. We had an offensive lineman that was blessed enough to have a number of different offers and they're going to Duke. And in our second round playoff game, we were, even though he was effective uh, and, and had so, so many opportunities, he still was taking bad steps. So I think that's important every day. Uh, the other thing that we'll oftentimes do that I, I think is important is, is teaching our kids how to be effective in some of uh, uh, our schemes. And so one of the schemes that we'll uh, do is our inside and outside zone. Well, our inside and outside zone. And when we work this inside and outside zone drill, what we'll try to do is, is try to put them in the, the different scenarios that they might see. So if we're working our inside zone drill, we're going to line up guys up in different techniques. And sometimes they'll be head up, sometimes they'll be outside. And then saying that these two, when we're in a zone scheme here, what are the different looks that we would have here? And we'll get a, we'll get a group of guys and, and that'll be in line and we'll, we'll work on inside zone. And as we work on this inside zone, sometimes we'll tell this guy, hey, stay there. We're zoning here. What happens if this guy stays there? What do we want, what do we want to see? That linebacker flows over the top. How is that going to work? This guy slants outside. The, the linebacker flows inside. And giving them all the different scenarios that they could possibly see so that we're really effective with this block. And at times, you know, you'll be a front side guy or back side guy. And so we'll just rotate through here and guys will come and he'll first be the inside guy at inside zone. And then he'll be the outside guy and just kind of rotate through here. To, it's a really good, easy way, an effective way to kind of teach the zone. We'll do that at an inside zone and outside zone combos. Uh, and then we'll do the same thing where we ultimately will line up into our, some of our gap schemes. All right, so some of our gap scheme, depending if it's a three-man or four-man front, sometimes we'll combo block, say we're running a counter or power gap scheme over here to the right, where now we're double-teaming a guy to the backside linebacker. And we'll make them double-team and try to get the, the effective in the different scenarios that they'll see here. Well, what happens if this guy stays? Well, if this guy stays, we want to drive his nose and throw him in the laps of the backside linebacker. If this guy slants, who's going to take him? And seeing the different scenarios that you would on a game day, I think are, it's some of the drills that we do, I think, that are very effective. Uh, one of the major things I say, I, I think, as an offensive line coach, or for this coach in anything, is, is, you know, work on the things that you need to work on. Every every week, uh, there'll be things that change. I sometimes kind of equivalent to, you know, being a captain of a ship, or I'm in charge of keeping this ship afloat. What are the things that I'm going to have to work on? Well, you know, there'll be times where we'll kind of go away from some of the things like, Maybe we didn't work on pass protection or, 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 you know, our pass setting. We start to slack there, and I see that on film, and we see that in practice. Well, I'm going to start to focus some of more of my individual drills on the things, the areas that are needed, and I think that's effective. Uh, but the major thing I think is really important is understanding uh, you know, what, you, what you're good at. Uh, find something that you're good at and, and, you know, something that you can hang your hat on. Every year is different. Last year we had a very athletic quarterback. Uh, and probably one of the best athletes he ever had. So we found ways to utilize him as much as possible and take advantage of his, his athleticism. Some years we may not have that. We're not blessed enough in some of these college programs where they can just say, this is what we run no matter what. Instead of saying that, we're going to try to find what's the way that we can find, be most effective with each year and year in and year out the personalities and the team that we have. Find something to, to build our hat, you know, that we can hang our hat on and that our guys can be effective uh, to be uh, the, the, give us the best chance offensively to be as effective as possible. So, like we said before, I know that goes fast, but if there's anything that you guys need uh, or questions or, or need anything, uh, feel free to, to reach out to us, and we'll be glad to help you in any way possible. Good evening. Good morning. I know it's late over there. I'm Kevin Poole. I coach the running backs. Uh, our job is to uh, – really good because oftentimes they make us look really good. Uh, at the running back position, I'm not too concerned uh, with what these guys do down the field past the line of scrimmage. My job is to get them, uh, get the ball in their hands, get them to the line of scrimmage, make sure they know how to get that done. Uh, it's an old adage in coaching, running backs coaches don't teach running backs how to run. Uh, and so my job, the thing I focus on the most is ball security, um, and I kind of infuse that into everything that we do. Uh, one of the drills that kind of concepts that I've come up with, uh, 
seen it a couple places. Uh, is we use kind of just use what we have. Uh, there's not really enough football to go around for every kid to be running around and, and focusing on, on certain things. Um, and then just talking with guys that I know, it's not so much there's an old thing about having all these different points of pressure on the ball. Um, I try to simplify it. Try to get my guys to think as, as little as possible and, and do because these guys are superior athletes that I've been blessed to coach. Um, Any time any one of our guys gets the ball in their hand, uh, there's a high probability that they could probably make something big happen. And so uh, I just want to make sure that they keep the ball in their hand. Uh, one thing I came up with was just simply using uh, a tennis ball, use baseball, lacrosse ball, something something much smaller than a football uh, to emphasize body position and muscle memory with your arm uh, and pressure points here. Uh, I tell all my guys, you know, not a lot of my guys play baseball, but gripping the ball with your, with your two dominant fingers here on the tip of the ball is, is key, but really the, the elbow position and everything and the pressure you put on the ball with the rest of your arm. And so uh, in our position stretch, which we have pre-practice or even during our individual, sometimes during our team stretch, I'll have my guys carry their tennis balls with them and do this drill. Uh, it, it's something that goes with everything that we do. Uh, take the tennis ball and you kind of just put it here in a really awkward spot, kind of just above your elbow uh, to, the, to the start of your bicep, not in here in the elbow joint where you can squeeze on it, uh, but right here where you've got nothing else to hold it with unless you press it to your body. Uh, and then they keep their arm high. And we just go through any kind of drill, any kind of movement drill uh, that they have to do, they have to keep the ball pinned to their body. And that, that's a, I felt like that's, that's helped these guys a lot to kind of keep the, the, the ball high. I tell them all the time, I ask young freshmen when they hold the ball low, you know, how much do you curl? Can you curl 200 pounds with that one arm? You can't, then you can't carry it. Though. Because somebody's going to be hanging on that arm, you can't curl it. Keep that ball high, keep it tight. Uh, the other thing it helps with is if we're moving laterally, laterally at all, uh, they can't flail out. Most guys want to flail out and get balanced. Uh, as a back, you have to be balanced and tight and skinny. And so keeping that tennis ball there, uh, it just helps them kind of get used to moving in that manner. Um, one drill that I really like to do, Coach uh, Myers alluded to it, we use quarterbacks in this a lot, is uh, it helps to get some, some competition in practice and work lateral cuts. Uh, backs oftentimes have to accelerate, decelerate, make a lateral move, and then get back to full speed again. Uh, I saw this on Twitter from a, from a guy in Utah. Uh, he put some, some plastic pipe together. You can use cone to create a pattern. Uh, but I set guys up, and they have to accelerate into this elbow here, keep their hips, shoulders square, make a jump cut, and then accelerate again and finish the drill. And then we'll kind of spice it up. We'll add a guy over here and have them going at the same time. That way, they're used to seeing a human body flying at them, and they're used to you know, getting used to uh, avoiding as well. Uh, and they'll go at the same time. We, we add a relay component to it. They love to compete and race, and it kind of gets them going to practice. Uh, the other thing we do is we put quarterbacks back here, and we work our handoffs and mesh. Uh, and we have a coach here that kind of simulates a read. A lot of the stuff that we do in our offense incorporates a read. So uh, this is a good build that I like because you can progress off of it a lot. Just a simple cone pattern, uh, whatever you like. You can amend it however you like. Uh, it, it helps and can do a lot of stuff no matter what your scheme is. Uh, and, and that's the key. A lot of the stuff I do is just we run a lot of different run schemes, and so these things are kind of interchangeable with a lot of the stuff that we do. Uh, if you guys have any questions, again, for us about uh, what we do, if you guys have any questions about the steps, what we can help you with, our contact information is there, and uh, we're always willing to help. So next up is our receivers coach, Jason Trahan. Thanks. Uh, hi, I'm Coach Strahan. I coach uh, receivers here at Dawson High School. Um, and I'm going to talk about one of the drills that we do uh, pretty much on a daily basis. Uh, well, really through that uh, the Monday through um, Wednesday practices where we're actually having a full practice. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of drills that we do uh, individually and stuff like that. But um, probably the most beneficial drill that we do and probably the most important drill that we do uh, is called routes on air. Um, and routes on air is, is just the receivers and the quarterbacks, and it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's our opportunity to develop the timing between the quarterbacks and the receivers uh, because uh, pretty much all of our passing game is based on timing, whether it's quick game or whether it's drop back. So um, one thing that we do on a, a, a week, uh, daily basis and we usually do this right after our individual uh, period of time, right before team, um, is we'll line up the quarterbacks. We'll line up two quarterbacks in the middle of the field. Um, and then we'll line up uh, the receivers 
and pretty much a, a kind of a doubles formation. Um, and the reason, the reason being that we just lined up in the doubles formation is that, um, you know, we can run pretty much all of our routes from this, whether uh, it's a play that we just run out of twins or whether it's a play that we just run to maybe a single receiver, um, you just have one quarterback throwing it to one receiver at a time. Um, I've seen plenty of uh, routes on air where, you know, you'll, you'll, they'll line up four quarterbacks and, and they'll snap the ball and they're throwing it to four different receivers and the balls are going everywhere. And, um, you know, you don't have enough coaches and enough eyes to really focus and, and coach up all of those guys if they're running four routes at a time. So what we do is we just go, uh, you know, quarterback outside receivers up. He'll run a route. The quarterback will throw it to him. So, you know, again, he's uh, taking the snap. He's throwing it to that guy, okay? And now the inside receiver will go up. He's taking a snap, and he's throwing it to that guy. We're just getting reps, reps, reps. Um, again, and, and it's all – the purpose of it is for timing. Um, so I'll talk about just kind of one specific route. Uh, we call this a banana route, and, and it's kind of just like a, a deep out route. Um, and we run this on, on one of the plays that we do. Uh, but – uh, the receiver's breaking route is at about 10 yards, and he's running to 15 yards on the sideline. Um, and this is this is a part of our drop back pass game. So um, the quarterback is actually taking a three step drop. Um, by the time the quarterback takes his three step drop, and he's going through you know whatever he has to do, his drops, his steps, and all of that. Well, by the time he's done with his three step drop, our receiver needs to be probably coming out. And we want to hit this pass, you know, in this area before we get to the sideline. Um, and, and that's so important that we get that timing down. Because, again, the quarterbacks, we're, we're training them to throw it to spots on the field rather than throw it to receivers. Okay? So that way, again, the quarterback's taking his steps. All right? And by the time he's ready to throw it, whether the receiver's there or not, He's going to release that ball. So I really stress to my receivers that uh, you need to be at this spot when you're there. So, um, you know, that's just something that we do. Uh, and, and we'll give them different kind of looks, uh, you know, versus the defense. Uh, we might line a, a, a coach or something like that just to give them a little press release. And we work that timing as well because you're going to see a lot of different things. But, um, again, I know that was quick and – uh, but if you guys have any questions on uh, routes or, or timing and play concepts or, or anything like that, uh, just feel free to, to email me or anything like that. I, I would love to talk past game um, with you guys. So, uh, again, thank you guys for your time. Uh, my name is Trey Grimes. I'm the defense coordinator, inside linebacker coach. Uh, we'll talk to you a little bit about our organization, try to get through it quick, give you a drill at the end, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about some man. Um, man cover stuff, and then hopefully we'll get to some D-line drill. Um, our practice organization is based on a three-day work week. Uh, I would encourage you guys to set a tone for each day of the week that you're trying to get accomplished. Um, the biggest thing we try to do is adjust, adjust drills and sessions, group sessions, what our kids really need. Okay, Monday is our install day, our teach day. Um, we have already, by the time we get outside and practice, we've already met with our kids and gone over the game plan. We actually send it to them. Uh, on uh, online uh, Sunday. Well, by the time they get here Monday, they've already seen it. Uh, but it's a big teach day, right? We're just making sure that our game plan is installed, that we know how to line up. And, um, you know, as far as running plays, trying to take, you know, as many first down plays as we can, uh, but make sure that we're showing them their top formation and backfield set uh, so that we're prepared to go. Usually we'll get between 28, 28 to 36 uh, plays on a Monday's practice. Um, if an athlete messes up on a Monday, that's fine. We'll pull them out. I mean, we'll stop practice, we'll teach, uh, and we'll move on from there. Okay, this is kind of an example of our uh, our Monday practice. It's um, the PowerPoint is in the uh, is in the chat, guys. Uh, Tuesday, don't stop Tuesday. We're trying to go fast. We're trying to get as many reps as we can. Tuesday is our one full padded day of the practice uh, of the week. Full padded practice of the week. Uh, we do our tackling circuit on Tuesday. Uh, we tackle every day an individual, but Tuesday is a big group uh, target. Our objective is to make any adjustments for Monday that we've seen. Um, 
you know, and, and try to get as many reps as we can. Hey, Monday was, you know, around 25 to 30. We're trying to get 70 to 80 total reps on Tuesday. Then Tuesday, we're still repping first down. We got to win first down, too. Uh, we got second down play and then third and short. This is our, our one full padded practice. We're trying to go, uh, we're trying to go, you know, short yardage plays whenever we can. Um, and then Tuesday is also our day that we try to mix in some some different uh, periods, right? That that we feel like our kids need. Hey, okay, this week we're our over fifth. We base out of the three man front. Our over front of the four man front. We were going to run a little bit of it this week. We make sure that we, we put it in our practices just to focus on just that. Um, so that's kind of an example of of, uh, of adjusting what you need, right? Wednesday, we're trying to do no, no, nothing new on, on, on Wednesday, right? We're not adding anything. If anything, we're pulling stuff out uh, of the game plan. And we want to make sure that on Wednesday, there's no, there's no uh, confusion between kids and coaches. Uh, if there's something that somebody's not sure about, we wrap it on Wednesday to – to make it clear. Okay, and if it's not clear after Wednesday, it's out of the game plan. Um, so again, on Wednesday, first time through team, we go two sessions a team. First time through, we're going P and 10, which is just first play of the possession. Uh, and then second, third and long. Second time through, I try to take a drive from the opponent uh, of the game we've scouted and just run that uh, during one of the team sessions. Okay, so this is kind of a uh, our Tuesday schedule. <laughs> Thursday, kind of a walkthrough. Uh, we simulate everything, and then Friday is our uh, is our game day. Um, one of the drills. Oh, that gets from me. I go back. Yeah. Hey, linebacker play. Um, they got to be great communicators for us. We try to keep them patient, and so a lot of the drills we do, uh, they're they're patient in their footwork, and then we, we try to fit window. Uh, we want to be physical and aggressive at the point of attack, uh, and then a foxhole. Okay, this is a drill where uh, this is a drill where we are trying to get as many kids and coaches involved as we can. Okay, so these black seeds down here are coaches. You can stand here if you want to, uh, but this is a linebacker defense end. Hey, this is defense end linebacker uh, again in linebacker, right? So we're just trying to simulate as many as, many as we can. Say we want to rep zone this week, right? We're going to tell these guys the zone. Okay, we got to change, so he'll chase. He'll replace. Right, it's a quick rep, it's quick coaching, um, and then and then they reset right back. Okay, you can take these guys and do all this stuff that you want to, um, but it's you know we run it for for twelve minutes. We're trying to get a total of about 30, 30 to forty reps doing this. Okay, same thing here. You got uh, a mic and a nose, right? You got two noses and a mic. However, you got to work it. These are kids running, it, and there's one coach running all this stuff. Right, so if you want to work cool with these interior guys, work them. Okay, it's just a it's a, a simple way. To get a controlled atmosphere to where um, you can rep all this stuff that you need to rep. Okay. So here's uh, Coach Cox. He's going to come up and talk about man technique stuff and how we how we play man. Hey guys, thanks for sticking on here with us. Uh, like the coach said, I'm Jerry Cox. I'm our safety coach here at Dawson. Uh, we incorporate a lot of man coverage techniques. So. I'm going to be a little bit different in how I present. I'm going to talk about how the progression we teach man. And then at the end, I do have some drills listed. And uh, I'm not going to spend as much time on those drills, but feel free to ask me any questions about those drills and how to incorporate it. So I'm going to kind of go through the teaching progression. All right, so when to play man. For us, a man is something that we hang our hat on. We're a pressure defense. We're bringing it from different angles, bringing lots of different guys. So we're going to be in situations where we play a lot of man. All right, so we have the type of athletes that can do that. So like Coach Grant was kind of saying earlier when he was talking about fitting your schemes to your players, we have fast kids. So we're able to play man quite a bit. But one thing I want to point out here is that even if you don't play man as a primary coverage, even if you're more of a zone coverage type team, there are techniques here that are going to be beneficial for you in zone. Uh, or formations, certain formations that may dictate that you have to play man at least with one guy. All right, so it's going to be effective. We always say at some point it always turns into man. If a guy runs vertical down the field, at some point I have to open up and cover. So I think it's, it's going to help you regardless of what kind of team you are. As far as our body position, we start out with good balance, athletic position, just like everything you do in the weight room. We always say good athletic position, anywhere from armpit to shoulder width. But the key is staying within that plane. 
uh, we say weight on the balls of your feet. You want to be forward. And something that I use as a cue for that is nose over toes. So I have my toes up here. I never want to be back here because I'm in a position where I can't change directions very quickly. So we say nose over toes. Hands up near the chest. So I'm able to use my hands on, on the snap. And then a slight bend in the knees. I don't have to be in an uncomfortable squat position. But just a slight bend in the knees uh, and get the weight on the, on the toes. Okay? So as far as how we move and how we change directions, one of the most important things for a defensive back is how fast can you change directions because the guys on the offensive side, they know where they're going, we don't. So we have to be as effective as possible in how we move. Okay? So like I said, with our feet, we keep shoulder distance. We don't want to get in too narrow or too wide. When I get too narrow, I lose my base. And if I make contact with that receiver, it can kind of throw me off balance. If I get out too wide, then it becomes a little bit more difficult for me to change directions at that point. Um, we talk about how they move across the turf. When we're watching our guys do drills. We want to move lightly across the turf or the blades of grass, kind of just barely scraping the grass. We don't want to dig in too much. And we also don't want to have our legs up in the air too much. The, more we, the higher we have our feet off the ground, the harder it is for us to change direction. Um, hip flexibility is key as a defensive back, especially, because you're going to have to change directions quickly. So being able to move in and out, you know, when you're lifting weights and incorporating that kind of stuff, we, we do a lot of that so that we can make sure that our guys have good hip flexibility. That's something we incorporated a lot last year, and I feel like it really helped us, especially in the back end. Eye discipline. One of the biggest things when you're playing man is you can't stay in the backfield. You have your man, you have to have your eyes on his hip. So wherever the receiver's lined up, I have my eyes on his near hip, and that's going to give you the best indicator of where he's going. But we don't want to get involved looking up high, looking at the head movement, or looking at the feet. We want to look at the hip. So he has to take his hip wherever he goes. Uh, the receiver's hips are going to sink when he's going to make a move. He has to come down here before he makes a move. He's not just going to stay straight up whenever he gets ready to change directions. But we also want to, when he moves and sinks his hips, we're going to sink our hips. And there's a drill that we incorporate uh, to teach that. Uh, don't look back at the ball unless you're in phase. When we say in phase or out of phase, we want to be able to have physical contact with the receiver before we look back, okay? So we never just want to look back uh, before. If there's space in between myself and the receiver, I don't want to look back because now he's just gaining more ground and then I look back for the football. So we always want to be what we call in phase. Our press technique, we're about a yard and a half to two yards up around the scrimmage. We play inside leverage with our out, outside foot splitting the receiver. And again, eyes on the near hip. We just want to take a nice six-inch step off the snap. That gives us time to uh, digest what's going on in front of us and to not panic. We always we talk about avoiding false steps. We don't want to take a step here. Because if I go forward and he goes this way, I'm already losing ground. He's already got a, a beat on me. Uh, we always say be very patient. And it's a hard thing to teach because you see him moving rapidly, you want to start moving rapidly well and start opening up. We want to stay square as long as possible. Be under control with our hands and use our feet before we use our hands. A lot of guys would lunge. We want to rely on our feet to get us in great position and then We'll move. And then the last thing is, uh, on this last part, is once we get in phase, we get a good body lean on a guy. We always talk about leaning on the receiver, lean up against him, and then go high point the ball. Don't let the ball get down here, but go catch it up at its highest point. And then there's a list of drills. If you guys uh, have any questions about that, how to incorporate those drills, a teacher man technique, just let me know, email me, and I'll be happy to discuss any of those drills with you guys. Uh, now Coach Garcia is going to talk about some defensive line. All right, guys, I'm Coach Garcia. I, have a, I actually have a video for you guys. Um, now it's not a great video, mostly because it's actually me performing the drills, not one of my kids. And, and as I've gotten older in age, I'm definitely not as uh, as limber as I used to be, so I don't move as well as I used to. But basically, um, what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is some everyday drills. <clears throat> And uh, as, as we do our everyday drills, all right, so one of the first things we start off with is quick, uh, for our agilities, we start off with quick feet, okay? So for a quick feet, right here, as you can see, guys, you're going to start, and I give them a starting point, uh, and then there's a finishing point over here. And what we're looking for, guys, is quick, quick feet right there. We're going to go forward. You'll notice I'm going to strike, okay? Uh, you, you see the two-hand strike, and then you're going to see me flip my hips to the side. All right, so we worked out with the kids. 
Read like you'll be found. Okay. And then we'll work lateral. We'll work a lateral one where we're trying to incorporate squeezing a user off of the lineman down the line. Okay. Uh, and then what we work is, is we call this a spill. Basically, um, what we do is is we'll take our outside arm and put it on the inside body of an offensive lineman who's trying to block me on like a counter play. So I'm going to squeeze the lineman to see the offensive lineman. And if I see a puller coming at me like on the counter, I'm going to go attack him and take my outside arm and put it on the inside body. All right, the next drill here okay, uh, for our D-line position drill, we just going to be some get-offs. Okay? Now, this is real simple. All right, coach. All right, on the get-offs, we, we call this with a serve. Uh, so what we do here on the get-off with a serve, we, we try to fire off the ball. So initially, the first thing you want to do is teach the kids to just fire off the ball. So without the serve, you're just firing off the ball as fast as you can. And I give my kids about a two to three yard landmark. I just want to see how fast they get a past two to three yards. I don't even run uh, further than that. Okay? And then we'll, we'll incorporate a, a redirection on Okay. So as you know, see here is a get off with a serve. Notice I'm squeezing, 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 then they're going to turn and run. Okay. Get off, squeeze, squeeze, the long arm right there, and they turn and run. And we'll do three kids at a time because once again, like Coach Bernard said, we base out of three man front. But if you want to, you can base it out of four man front. All right, the next one is going to be a get off um, with a chase. Okay. At this point, on this point, what we're going to do is we're going to get off, we're still going to squeeze, and then we're going to just turn and chase. Go ahead, throw. All right, I'm going to fire off the ball here, squeeze, and then chase, okay? And, and as you can see, my cards are laid out. I'll give them a, a distance to go, okay? All right, then we'll go to the next one. <clears throat> and this is our sled progression. So when we do our sled progression right here, as you can see, uh, I'm going to start off and just do quick hands. But if I'm doing it against my wall at my house. Uh, but, but if you have a sled, you can use a sled. If you don't have a sled, what we do is we create a human sled. So go ahead and put Okay. And so I'm going to show you on the board how I set it up, and then I have a couple of coaches going to help, help me with it. Okay. So essentially, you can use as many kids as you want, okay. but you'll have an opposite lineman down on his knees, and then you're going to have one behind him to anchor him down. And then you're going to put your defensive lineman right there. Okay. And so from here, you're going to be able to work the drills that I'm going to show you guys. Okay. So as you can see, coaches are down on their knees. You got one anchoring on back. Uh, Coach Grimes doesn't have both knees on because he has surgery. Okay? But uh, at this point, I would do my quick hands right there. And from this position, I'll just strike my quick hands. Okay? And all the drills you're going to see here, that they, they, we would be able to do with this. Now, it is important that this guy behind him anchors him down with his hip on his back so that when we get into our, to what we're going to show you in a second, where we're, we're doing some get off and strikes him, he doesn't fold backwards. Okay? And I would do that more to the more aggressive thing. Coaches? So as we can see on the film, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about as far as the, uh, the drills that I'm talking about here. So once again, I start off with uh, quick hands, just shoot, shoot, and I do it about two or three times, and then we do quick hands with the knee, okay? Just trying to get them to use the first step with their hands, first step with their hands, okay? And then next, we'll get off the knee with the rib, okay? We're not going to talk about And pause it right there. So right here, what I do, and obviously I don't have a bag that I can grab a pool or a person in front of me here. This is my house. Uh, so normally what I do is as, as I strike and I got my knee up, when I'm trying to rip through, I'm actually going to pull the lineman towards me and rip me. Okay. Uh, go ahead and go to the next one. We got our uh, two-step. Our two-step, one to get about hand left away from the pad or the person. Just step, take two steps. Big key here, guys, keep your heels off the ground. Okay. All right, and then you're just going to strike the wall there. The next one and the last drill that I usually use, the two-step with the hip flip, same thing, and then flip the hips to the gap that you want it to go to. Okay? You see it one time, two-step, hip flip. And then you can incorporate, when you flip your hips, you can incorporate your ribs, you can incorporate your arm over, whichever one you're trying to go with. All right, uh, here on the uh, PowerPoint, the Coach Grimes and Coach Fox uh, spoke on, you can find our information here. Uh, you can contact any one of us through our email, and we're willing to share any of the information. The video that you just saw, if you want to get a copy of this, you can see those uh, drills again. I'll be willing to send it to you guys um, on, this web, on this email or on Coach Allison's email. Thank you, guys.
There we go. All right, uh, guys, just to, to reiterate, uh, I thank you for coming to this. I hope that you got a, a little bit of information that will help you out. Um, and the PowerPoints that we use today are in the chat. Um, Y'all can find the drills, some of the things that we talked about, but you can also find our contact information. And uh, please feel free to shoot us an email. Uh, we're willing to help in any way that we can. Uh, we can share a video, uh, set up a different Zoom if we need to do that uh, to go over some other things. But, uh, you know, we're, we're here to help out in any way we can, like I said. Uh, I don't know how much time we have left, but if anybody has any questions or uh, anything else that y'all would like for us to, to to help you with, you can let us know for sure. So yeah, we're we're sitting at three minutes left here, five fifty, and everybody will go join that main session again. So, you guys got any questions for the coaches right now? Feel free to speak up. Uh, other than that, we'll meet everybody back out in the main room. Still here, Coach. Is it, did I say that right, Nicola? Nicola, yeah, everybody calls me Johnny, so. <laughs> oh, okay, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. Where are you from, Johnny? From Belgrade, Serbia, Coach. Oh, okay. So what I noticed earlier when you had your, your camera on, you're a big fella. What do you coach? You coach the, the line? Uh, well, I, I'm still an active player, but uh, I'm an I'm a offensive lineman. Okay, awesome. Yeah. I, I did coach uh, a youth team, like under 15. That was my first coaching experience. But here, that uh, under 15 guys are playing football 7-7 uh, seven, seven or 9-9. Nine on nine. Okay. Well, that yeah, that's a little bit different situation than we're in, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Um, but, uh, hey, I, like I was saying, guys, if you all have questions or whatever, please don't hesitate to, to send us emails, um, and, and we'll, we'll set up different ways where we can share some things with you. I, like I said earlier, I, I feel like we are blessed uh, here at Dawson to have – uh, a great group of men uh, coaching these kids here, and uh, they're very, uh, I guess, generous, very helpful with anything that we have. Um, and we, we're we fortunate enough to have a, a full staff this year, so uh, there we have quite a few coaches that, that didn't get in front of the camera uh, that would be, that would love to be able to help you all out as well. So, if it's a question about anything from today or a question about anything that we didn't cover, uh, we have somebody that can help you out. So uh, y'all please contact us if y'all need to. Yeah, we will coach. Thank you. Thank you a lot for this. It, it means uh, a lot for us. And I'll talk with my with my offensive and defense linemen and see if they have any questions. And uh, I, I'm sure that they do have. I will, I will message you. I'll text you an email or something else. I'll ask you whatever we need to know. Okay, that's great. That's great. All right, guys, it's about that Thank time. You. So uh, let's, we're going to meet back in that main room. David asked us all to meet back there. So if you guys want to jump out there, we'll, we'll see you there. <laughs>